Uh, what we want to talk about now is tax planning and wealth transfer planning. For this year end, we've got to think about the income tax because there's some income tax um, issues that we want to plan for and wealth transfers also. So one of the first things to think about this year, year end 2010, is Roth IRA conversions. And don't forget that there's a special 15% income tax rate on qualified dividends and on long-term capital gains. And the maximum income tax bracket this year is 35%. So the Roth IRA conversions. There's no income limit. No matter how much you make, no matter how much you have in your IRA, you can convert it this year to a Roth IRA. You can elect either to pay all the income tax on that conversion this year or spread it into 2011 and 2012. If you're going to be spreading it into 2011 and 12, you're actually paying the tax in 2013, uh, 2012 and 2013. But remember that you'll be paying the income tax at the, at the rates that apply in those years. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Roth IRA conversions are not simple things to do in terms of uh, thinking it through. If you have any questions whatsoever, consult an expert. Tax attorneys, tax accountants, financial advisors can help you project out what would be the best approach for you with the Roth IRA conversion. Let's switch quickly now to a 15% bracket on dividends. If there is a C corporation, not an S corporation, but a C corporation, there's in effect a tax sale on dividends. For the next two months, you can take a dividend and pay a special 15% bracket rate on that. So if any of you has a C corporation, you might want to look at taking a dividend this year. Uh, these dividends will lose that special tax treatment uh, next year and will become ordinary income taxable at whatever the ordinary rates are. Look quickly at the 15% uh, bracket for long-term capital gains. That's going to go up to 20% next year. Don't forget this year, there's actually a, a special 0% long-term capital gain bracket that applies to some low-income taxpayers. So if you would normally be in the 10% uh, tax bracket on your other income and you have a long-term capital gain, you can actually pay 0% tax on that. Other year-end transfer uh, planning issues. You want to look at lifetime gifts. You want to look at inheritances. And for those who have grandchildren who might want to do some generation skipping transfers. So let's look at these quickly. Year-end gift tax planning. First of all, there's a $13,000 per donor, per donee annual exclusion from the gift tax. This is a use it or lose it proposition. In other words, January 1st rolls around and you now have next year's annual exclusions, not this year's annual exclusions. So for anyone who's interested in making transfers of wealth to their kids, grandkids, other relatives, friends, favorite tax attorney, whatever, up to $13,000 per person per year uh, is tax free. In addition to that, there's a $1 million per donor lifetime exemption. Uh, that exemption is not going to be changing. For clients who have blown through those exemptions, for truly wealthy people who've made significant taxable gifts, if they make a taxable gift above their million dollar lifetime exemption, there's a 35% gift tax rate. This is historically the lowest gift tax rate we have ever had, and it's going to change back to 55% next year. So for some people who are really interested in making mega wealth transfers, this is the year to do it. Let's look at inheritance planning. There's no federal estate tax. There's no Wisconsin estate tax, which means that if your uh, benefactor dies this year and leaves you an inheritance, there's no death taxes on it here in Wisconsin. Now, the downside of not having the death tax is that there's only a limited capital gains tax basis step up on inheritances. In other words, the IRS prior to this year and starting again next year says, if we assess a death tax, then we will give you a new cost basis for capital gains tax purposes. This year, when there's no death tax, there's only a limited basis adjustment of $1.3 million. The problem is going to be how you allocate that basis adjustment. The IRS still, to this day, has not published the forms how to do this. They haven't even told us what the form number is going to be, what it's going to look like, what information you put on it how you fill it out. The IRS didn't think this law was going to stick. It did. 
And so all of us in the advisory community, all of us working with clients, with families of clients who've died, are struggling, scrambling to figure out how to deal with this. Uh, in addition to that normal $1.3 million basis adjustment, uh, if there's a surviving spouse, there's up to an additional $3 million of uh, basis for those spousal transfers. For clients who are looking at making wealth transfers to grandchildren, either directly to grandchildren or perhaps uh, into a trust which will eventually get to grandchildren, there's no federal generation skipping tax this year. The generation skipping tax will uh, again apply back in next year with a flat 55%. So those are some of the things to think about for this year. 